Call this meeting to order. Please join me for the uh, standing of the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, as this is the first meeting of the fiscal year, uh, we will start with board reorganization uh, we need to elect a chair and a clerk for the 2015 2016 term do i hear a motion to nominate i'd like to make a motion to nominate uh nominate krista silva as chair okay do i hear a second second Hearing none other. Is there anybody else that's interested? Are you interested? Are you, are you, are you interested in being on this? Yeah, I can do it. That's I'll, I'll nominate um, Jason Creel as chair. Okay, it's my nomination, I guess. Do I hear a second? <laughs> Hearing none. Uh, We have a motion for Chris De Silva, seconded by uh, from Terrence Donovan, seconded by Tim Egan. Uh, all in favor? Okay. Thank you. Okay, Chris, I will uh, then hand over all of this. the switchies today. Congratulations. Can I get, get Bill's folder? Uh, yeah. You got the get folder. the magic blue folder. Magic folder. Mr. Chair, the, uh, let's see, the agenda report has uh, action items for this evening's meeting, including uh, needed motions on items. So if you have that available, will help. I think, I think I handed it yeah, to we got this one. Okay. I Good. printed one out and I think I gave it to Chris. Good. <coughs> the next order of business is to elect a clerk. Mm -hmm. In motions, elect a clerk. Okay. Motion to nominate Terrence Donovan as clerk. I'll second. I'll second. Is Jason no longer want to be the clerk? Actually, I'm not even sure. Can I be clerk twice in a row? Yeah, there's no, there's no limitation on clerk. Cl really? <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to be the clerk that bad. It's not defined. Oh. Uh, I can. I'm happy to continue as clerk or Terrence if you would like to take it over. Uh, I have no issue. Not that I would not like to take it over, but I will, you know, I do not know exactly what it entails. <coughs> have not been prepped for that, so for at least this meeting, that would be probably be detrimental to everybody. That's fine. I will continue to, I'll, well, I can take care of that for this meeting, <laughs> if that's your concern. Do you, do you want to stay? So I'll attract. Sure. I'll, st I'll stay. If okay. I retract my motion. So we need a motion to. Retract my motion. Was that motion ever second? Oh, yeah, I did. I it seconded it. You seconded it, so just please withdraw. Yeah. Withdraw it. New motion? New motion. I'll motion uh, Jason Creel as clerk. I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you guys. Uh, I just want to say uh, I appreciate that going better than the first time I got to do that last year. So, <laughs> so but, um, public comments. 
Yes, sir, Mr. Tommel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Uh, number <coughs> one, just a little, uh, stuff that you probably should have done. I didn't hear anybody close the nominations, which is a parliamentary procedure. Uh, I would like to know at what point uh, or where are we with the liquor licenses, the one that was down on part of the road, and also the <coughs> place down here on Main Street, what, where we are as far as closing books on them, or what actions are going to be taken, or what? Anybody got the information? Yeah, I, I, I can provide an update. The uh, license that you're referencing on Powder Mill Circle was a license that belonged to Peyton's uh, restaurant, the Karan Restaurant Group. They had an agreement in place with the town um, that they would apply, transfer, or open an establishment by June 30th at 4.30 p.m. Um, they came in on June 30th at 2.30 p.m. with a transfer, a complete transfer application to transfer the liquor license to um, the Fine Arts Theater. That's been scheduled for a transfer hearing request at our next selectmen's meeting on June 21st. July 21st. That's, I'm sorry, yeah, July 21st. So in other words, what you're saying, Mr. Administrator, that there will be a liquor license in the, in the theater? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there's an application uh, well, beforehand. I mean, the way things go, depending on, it, depending on likely there will be a license in the theater. It's possible there'll be a license in the theater, and it's okay, it's okay. definitive. Wait for the hearing. It's definitive that they're interested in a license. And the other, the other, the other item, uh, the yeah, they're they're receiving a notice that um, that from our legal team uh, effective immediately, as of July first, that their license is uh, had, had been revoked. <coughs> so that that license um, is available, and there's an interested party that's already been in touch. Um, that was on, first on our list um, to act on that license. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> no more public comments? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, third item is a motion to accept and approve the minutes of June 16th 2015 as shown in the packet so moved and a second second any discussion about the motion the moment minutes of June 16th all in favor of accepting Ms. shown The, the correspondence, item four, motion to accept and approve the list of correspondences as shown in items A through M. So moved. Second. Any discussion about the correspondence items? Do we have a vote? We can vote, yeah. Vote. All in favor of accepting the correspondence? <coughs> item number five is the consent agenda. A motion to approve the consent items as shown A, B, and C. Was that a motion or do you that's wish to have a motion? The, that's the motion. I'll second. A question? Okay. On the consent agenda, I think for probably for Kevin or Becky, the 18th annual road race. So this is just for the road race. This isn't any kind of ancillary. Correct. Correct. Is there a date? Bridges or anything? Yeah. So also, what's the date on that? September 19th, 2015. It's so just not. It's just not on the agenda. So. Oh, it's sorry. Not a big deal. Yeah, it's uh, scheduled for Saturday, September 19th, 2015. Um, at this point, all that's been requested is uh, what you have before you from Mary Branley um, on the road race as the 18th annual road race. We have not heard or are not anticipating um, any other ancillary requests, although in the past we have had 
as you recall, is probably what you're asking with regards to the liquor piece. Yeah. That came in separately from the executive director of the Boys and Girls Club. Um, we haven't heard that they're going to be looking to do that again. Um, but a as of now, it's just for the road race piece. Okay. And <coughs> can you clarify on item C, uh, reappointment for Frederick King of the Conservation Commission? What's the term? That's the correct term. June oh, no, 30th. again, there's no. I don't oh, June 30th, 2018. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> uh, I have no other questions. Any further questions on the consent agenda? All in favor of accepting the consent agenda? I missed who seconded that. David. I seconded. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Do I have to? Read this legal notice. Yes, please. Uh, hold on. We you have a couple of minutes. You got a couple of minutes. You may want to mm -hmm. just jump to setting a date. Uh, yeah. Number eight. <coughs> special meeting uh, date for goal setting for the board of selectmen. Okay. So a special meeting date, Kevin. Um, just. To inform the board, typically we have um, we've met. Typically, we try to make it as relaxed an atmosphere as possible. Not necessarily in this room. Um, sometimes we've gotten pizza or whatever brought in. Although last year the it was the promised. Chair, the chairman <laughs> promised, promised to not deliver. To deliver. Judges, he, uh, he promised us popcorn once too. By the way, he brought that. That happened. He brought yeah, that. Then he gets sick. It's That's typically uh, been done as. Uh, so like when Gavin said, in a remote location, um, just to kind of break up, uh, you know, the minutiae of here. Um, I'd recommend perhaps this year we, we maybe utilize the COA um, over at the golf course. I think it would be a good location. Last year we you know held. Know what that is, Chris? Last year we held the goals uh, meeting at the COA in their last, uh, their prior facility, um, for a few reasons. One to see what they've been they've been working in, um, but also. Uh, as a remote location, I think uh, it'd be worth uh, this board possibly meeting over there since we haven't had any uh, any meetings in that location. Offer that as a suggestion. Yeah. Inside or outside? Whatever the weather allows. Whatever the weather <laughs> allows. Well, it's uh, quite a handsome deck there now. So it is a uh, <coughs> it is a public meeting. Um, not that we generally have anyone join us for this, but uh, it is public, so it has to be posted as a location. How much room? Do they have? What's that? We have enough room for 20 people or so, just in case. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or we could move it into the... Yeah. Uh, into no, there's... there's room side. Just yeah, 30-some-odd yeah. chairs. Just, yeah. So, do you have any suggested dates, Kevin? Um, I don't. Any dates that people will be on vacation that can't make? Weeks that people uh, are out first week of August. August so, you have the proposed calendar for meeting dates, so you can right. see what the on and off dates are. Right. Didn't we have uh, that was given to us tonight, right? Yep. Oh, it's in the packet. It's yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not available August the 10th, which is one of the dates that was down. I think as a, like an alternative Tuesday date. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not available that week either. So. Okay. Is that the date, August the 10th? Uh, I see August 11th. 11th, 11th, 11th is a, whatever. Is a that, yeah, that's uh, proposed meeting date. That's something different. I yeah, okay. To. That wasn't a proposed date for for this. Um, <coughs> find another time, perhaps the end of July, or it doesn't have to be a Tuesday either. Okay, we might as well keep it on a Tuesday to make everybody happy. Is everybody okay with July? No, that's not. That's too soon. July 28th. It's an open date on our calendar. Chris, I may have a conflict on the 28th, but I could do the 29th. Wednesday the 29th? Yeah. Wednesday the 29th, okay with everybody? Looks that way. Yeah. Okay with you guys? Works for us. 7 o'clock? Whatever works for you. You want to make it a little earlier? We do. We, I think we've we done it earlier in the past. 6 o'clock? about 6.15? <laughs> that, well, I'll give you, you I'll give you 15 minutes. I'm going to have to work till. How about 6:30? We split the difference. 6:30.
I might have to work until on five July twenty ninth. Have a rush to get back. And that's at the yeah, don't rush. C O A space <laughs> at the golf course. Yes. Yes. Yeah. If anyone has a conflict, we can always adjust. Okay. Now you are all set for your hearing. Okay. Two. Do I have to read the legal notice? Yes. Okay. So I have to open the hearing and read the notice? Right. Yes. Okay. It's time 718. I'd like to open a public hearing for Eversource poll hearing for Great Road at poll 4141. And the, the legal notice reads, notice is hereby given in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 166, that a public hearing will be held on Tuesday, July 7th, 2015, at 7.15 p.m. in the Michael J. Giannotis meeting room at the Maynard Town Building. The petition and plan is being presented by the NSTAR Electric Company doing business as Eversource Energy for the purpose of obtaining a grant of location for installation approximately 12 feet of conduit at pole 4141 on Great Road, Maynard. The public is welcome to attend. A copy is filed with Town Clerk and Board of Selectmen. The meeting is now open. Mr. Chair, we have uh, Chris Cosby here from Eversource. Yes, um, yes. Speak. Yes, sir. We're uh, requesting a grant of location for approximately 12 feet of conduit within Great Road, and that would be located at pole 41 over 41. And the purpose of the installation would be to provide the new electric service to a new seven, seven house uh, subdivision on King Avenue. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, quickly. Um, this isn't a traditional poll that we normally would see, telephone poll type thing, or is this something different? I was trying to figure out exactly, because uh, it says something about PVC pipes or whatever, and what are we talking about? Um, the poll's existing. It's already out there. It's a line okay. pole, and the conduit would be installed under the ground, and then it would rise up on the pole okay. and the stem pipe. All right. I think I've seen them on other yeah. poles. Yeah. Um, then the second question, if I may, Mr. Chair, is, um, is as far as you know, is there any intention of putting poles along Keene Ave? No, not that I know of. Okay. It's all underground. It's all underground. Okay, thank you. So, quick question, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, we confirm that this conduit is going to be attached to an existing pole that you're saying? Well, actually, the conduit will be in the ground, under the ground, three feet. We generally are three feet deep in the ground, the, two, the PVC pipe. And then it, the, <coughs> the cable will rise up on the pole, and then we, we put the steel pipe over the cable that's on the pole. So that will be attached to an existing pole that's already there, though? Yes. Okay. So essentially nothing new above ground? Nothing new above ground. that piece that's going to attach Except that, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any questions, Jason? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Tim? Nope. Okay. <coughs> um, motion. Move that the board approve a grant of location to NSTAR Electric Company, doing business as Eversource Energy and Verizon for the purpose of installation of conduit pole at 4141 on Great Road, Maynard, Mass, as more fully set on the plans dated June 11th, 2015. Mr. Chairman. Yes. All right, Mr. Chairman. Question. Yes, sir. Public hearing, right? Is this, this pole going to be located on Great Road or on Keene Avenue? There is, I don't see any schematic here or anything the, <coughs> the pole is the pole is, is located on Great Road it's, it's already there it's at the corner of where Keene Avenue is going in you're not putting in a new pole? no no well then let me ask you a question ma'am why are we having a hearing? it's for the conduit it's for the underground installation for the it's, conduit. it's the granting of an easement on public property, property. From the pole to the private property. You're putting, you're putting the electric <coughs> service underground on Gene Avenue, is that correct? Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. My apologies, Vic, for not asking. Thank you, okay, so what did you what did you have, Jason? Are you gonna tell me to ask for public comments? Yes. Thank you. No problem. Lesson <laughs> learned. Okay. Um, 
So I'll reread the, the I'll re reread the motion and move that the board approve a grant of location to NSTAR Electric Company doing business as Eversource Energy and Verizon for the purpose of installation of a conduit at pole 4141 on Great Road, Maynard, Mass., as more fully set on the plans dated June 11th, 2015. Second. Seconded by Mr. Gavin. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. We'll no. see you next week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, we have to sign it all? You do. Except that we meet yes. every other week. Little yellow tags to each spot that you need to sign. So. Okay. Do you know if that bill was successful? Hmm? Do you know if bill was successful? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It has to do the uh, setup. Service for Okay. This is part of that. So now we need to close that, close the hearing at 7.25. Public hearing has been closed. We have a second. Second. Thank you. <coughs> okay, so. And vote. Oh, all in favor of closing the hearing? Thank you. Okay, um, board, item number seven, board opening interviews. Um, I see Andrew is here. Joseph Topol. To Mr. Topol is here as well. Um, okay, so the first first uh, up. Interview. Mr. Topol is requesting appointment as constable. Is this a reappointment? No, sir. It's new. Yes. Okay. So new appointment, um, Mr. Chair. The board has uh, a minimal application uh, within the packet and the detail application for. Uh, Mr. Topol is attached as a separate item um, in the Dropbox. Okay. <coughs> so, um, okay, so I guess the first question, I'll ask the first question, what exactly does a constable do? Service a process. Okay. So, okay, any, any other questions? Well, in, in Maynard, I think, we they traditionally also will deliver certain warrants or something to the various locations that we uh, that we ask them to service to, um, as well as service to on regular civil matters and, yes. and whatever when asked upon by you know, a lawyer, whether it be civil or criminal. I imagine. Yeah, t attorneys also um, private parties. Uh, some people have a lot of maybe evictions if they have a yeah. problem with their tenants there's yep. notices um, some are criminal summonses usually it's a, a civil process yep. that's that's completed by a constable um, may I Chris yes sir um, do you have any experience in as uh, a yes I'm appointed currently in four towns the town of Concord Carlisle Bedford and Lincoln and I've been appointed for eight years I attached it with the uh, application so you'd have that. Yep. I'm also a licensed private detective and have been for 25 years since 1991 and um, have licenses um, to carry in three states, all concealed carry permits and they've been issued for 25 years as well, all in good standing. All my licenses are all up to date and current. If I may, Chairman Gavin, I did review the packet earlier today. This quick. I'm sorry. Just looking at Why are we right here? I already fired him. Um, very, uh, he has a lot of experience being a constable, so it was pretty impressive. Yes, One sir. of the questions I did have is, how much business is there for you to be a constable in five different towns? Is it a take away from the uh, rest of the job, or how do you fit it all in? No, it, it's it's sporadic. Um, the appointments for the town specific 
are for certain types of service. So in other words, I can come to Maynard and do a notice or serve a, um, um, a domestic summons. Uh, things that cannot be done unless you have an appointment within the town are summary process, which are eviction notices, summons and complaints, which are if someone's bringing a, a civil lawsuit. Those all need to be done by a constable that's appointed in the town or through what they call Rule 4C, uh, through the Concord District Court, which um, in, the, in, the, in the recent past, that's what I've been handling for some of the customers that I have. Um, when it comes to doing a summary process, I go into the court and ask for a 4C from the judge, and they're, they're usually um, provided to me to, so I can complete that service. It's for the town of Maynard. And, and we have just for um, I, I guess for my edification and for the rest of the board as well we have how many Kevin we have a handful but only one that's really active so um, it's really if it there's a few there are yeah. appointed we have we have overflow in case yeah, something's too busy absolutely. <coughs> yeah that was one of the reasons um, Larry Hartnett I think was appointed yeah. for some time here which I know Larry and I he was appointed in Concord but I know he's been he's a little older now he's not currently I don't think he's I think Mike Albanese is a as well, is yeah one as well. Mike's really the only active one at this time. <coughs> Mike is? Yes. So I'm available. I'm on the internet. I'm easy to find. I return my calls. I service my customers. I have repeat customers and I, I stay on top of it. Some constables are just, they have full-time jobs. They're not able to do that. Yep. So to understand the position further, he's allowed to be one in many towns? Yes, absolutely. It's very common. In fact, our current constables are constables in other communities as well. Larry, uh, Larry, I know it was. Yeah, he reciprocated with Concord. Yeah. Sometimes they have reciprocation agreements where they have to reciprocate. In other words, if someone from Maine wants to go to Concord, Concord will allow it. And then Lowell does that. So in other words, if, if I wanted to go to Lowell and be a constable, they would only accept me if the town that I'm, a, that I'm appointed in or that I live in will reciprocate and also would accept applications from the people who live in that town. I don't know if that's something your town does or not, but some towns do that. Uh, Kevin, is there a reason why uh, <coughs> it's stated in the uh, documentation that town of Maine doesn't allow constables, even though who may have license to carry Class A, not actually carry their weapon when they're actually serving town business? Or is that a state law, or is it? I don't believe it's a state law. I, I don't no. Know. I know it's... Basically, what it says is that's a policy of the town of Maynard, and uh, we ask for um, copies of licenses, but we, do while during doing uh, constable services, are not allowed to carry. Yeah, state the state law allows constables, but uh, town local ordinance. My yeah. understanding is that it's not allowed in the in the uh, application. Any idea how old that is? I don't. Yeah, I don't know. So, so if I could add, expand on that a little sure. bit, um, it, it can be a little. When you, when you go out to do a service or you're doing an eviction or you're serving somebody domestic summons for a divorce people do get angry we we'll also keep her the peace um they went in marlboro recently where it was very heated we had the police they they would they would come out to get to that point so if if it's not allowed um for protection um and the question was asked in bedford as well bedford allows it when i, I went to bedford for an appointment and they interviewed me um, they actually allowed, they asked me, you know, my experience, and I told them I have experience, I have some police experience, I have some training, and uh, they, 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 they were fine with it. They just wanted to understand more why you have it and for what purpose, and it's for protection of yourself and, and anybody that may be in um, bodily harm, you know, somebody else for the protection of their life as well. In I, just fact, found, I just found it a little bit odd <coughs> that we asked for all this documentation, but yeah. this stipulates that there's no need to license the carrier. In fact, if, if you were to be facing a situation where you thought there might be some type of uh, hazardous condition or dangerous situation, you would you would invite the police to accompany Absolutely. you, correct? Absolutely. First, first, first business, that's, that's their, that's their uh, jurisdiction. Yeah. Any more questions for Mr. Tobel? We have many applicants for this position. Uh, no, I will, uh, if I may, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to appoint um, Joseph Topol of Carlisle as constable for the town of Maynard. No second. All in favor? Okay, thank you, board. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one point yep. before you go. Thank you very much. But uh, Kevin, there's a lot of personal information on this stuff that we got 
uh, in the packet. How do we, can we destroy that <coughs> knowing that, you know, so is it in the packet it's or in the, it's, it was given to us separately <coughs> in Dropbox, but I just don't want to take the risk yeah, of somebody. Yeah, that's right. I can delete it out of Dropbox. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, anything sensitive you have should it, have been. Yeah. yeah. printed. We have a shredder here, Tone All. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's on the system, and I don't want, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, we'll take care of it. Um, you can take it off of Dropbox. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Second appointment is Andrew Demore. Is that how you pronounce it? Demore. Demore. Okay. Andrew Demore. And according to the packet, Andrew is currently the alternate and looking to replace Max Lamson, who has resigned from the planning board. Or is not seeking reappointment, rather. Does anybody have any questions for Andrew? No. Uh, yes, if I may. Andrew, can you talk a little bit about how you utilize the manager development principles and community development principles into your decision making process as a member of the planning board? <coughs> sure. Uh, we try to. You know, most of our meetings are right here, and, and the principles are. Uh, well displayed right here and uh, essentially every decision uh, that we've undertaken over the course of the last year that I've served on the board uh, has seen the occasion to discuss the community development principles um, some more than others I would say it's well, some obviously <laughs> don't necessarily <laughs> affect right and, and, and you know some just don't come up you know right. um, but uh, as sort of a uh, basic credo with which to approach any project, uh, you know, it's a, it forms a, a very solid basis for us to evaluate uh, impact on the community, and especially uh, when it comes to, you know, when we end the special permitting process and we have the opportunity to, uh, you know, sort of do a little bit of horse trading around waivers that uh, customer that people are seeking uh, on their uh, applications uh, and looking for improvements. Uh, within the project, changes within the project, uh, improvements outside of the project. Um, these are the things that guide us in, in the direction we're going. Uh, you know, looking at, you know, additional sidewalk space outside of, you know, Keene Avenue that came up. Um, you know, addressing sort of walkability issues, you know, where in places where it's difficult now. Um, looking at, like, the sort of character issues, certainly. Uh, the 4951 Waltham Street development, which uh, was approved and is now under construction. Um, there was a lot of back and forth on that, both outside the board and within the board, um, that, that resulted in being a substantially better project for the community and especially for the neighborhood where it's located, um, really based on the character issues, which I think come up in multiple of these the you know there's sort of as I said the baseline it's what you want to try to adhere to um, if I may follow up question two, uh, unrelated to the development principles but if you're in a hearing and there is overwhelming opposition to an issue how do you react to the public commentary on that uh, in a situation where uh, you know, you might be voting on an issue that would go forward. Well, I think there's sort of two sides of that question. Uh, in my experience over the last year, often um, on issues where there is a lot of public outcry, or not outcry, that's a very strong word, but interest is perhaps a better word, um, it has frequently been on issues that the board is not, in fact, deliberating or empowered to adjudicate on. Um, <coughs> So in that case, it's been more of a matter of education. Uh, and I think that's actually always the key element when uh, you have members of the public at a hearing, is to make sure that they understand what the decision that's undertaken, you know, what factors are being deliberated, what really is outside of the purview of that board or of that question at that time, uh, or outside the purview of the town in general. Um, and then to, to help them understand you know, whether their issue is perhaps something the board can't address, even if it is within its purview. Um, so open communication, I think education, on like an empathetic understanding, because people are often, and there's sort of a double thing here too, right? People come in, they're passionate about something, there's something that's perhaps they perceive as um, 
you know, a risk to themselves in some way, a risk to their property, something they don't want to see. They're already kind of have an emotional state. And then they come in and speak in public, and for a lot of people that then heightens their emotional state even further. Um, and you can very quickly get people that, you know, lose their train of thought or become a little bit upset. And I think maintaining a very calm demeanor and trying to walk back through simple steps uh, to try to boil down the question at hand to what the real nuggets are, as opposed to letting the hyperbole or the, the feelings get carried away is an important element. And one last question. Certainly. Um, just in general, what's your feeling on uh, new development relative to above ground utility lines? Oh, I think it's absurd that there are any above ground utility lines. And if there was money, we should put them all underground, right? In 10 years, I'm sure you'd save hundreds of times more than it costs just in lost power outages, <coughs> repair, et cetera. I mean, the above ground utility line is, is a relic of the past that we're stuck with. But I'm, you know, happy to see on things like Keene and, and other developments that we're going to put them underground. Thank you, Jason. Mm -hmm. um, Andrew, I, you know, I have seen a lot of the work you guys have done, so I'm familiar with what you, what you've done, what you like, what you don't. Um, I guess one question, something I know you guys have been working on a lot now. Um, you know, with, with a planner, we're finally starting to be able to look forward. How do you think that process is going so far? I would say... And where, uh, and where would you like to see that process go? I would like to see that process accelerate. Uh, I think that we have been slowly moving to be able to look forward. Uh, the docket was relatively full uh, for a lot of the, uh, the year that I've served. Uh, we have had more opportunities to try to look forward right <coughs> now. We're in the process of uh, redeveloping the... Um, landscape regulations right now for the first time having a separate landscape regulations document uh, for all the projects which I think is going to be a huge step forward um, we are in the process now of also uh, looking at redesigning uh, the baseline planning board regulations uh, which I think is extremely good as well um, obviously there are larger things that are purely within the purview of the board such as any revisions to the master plan and the housing production plan upcoming uh, which are good baseline, again, elements for forward-looking. But I think we do need to spend more time um, on taking what I would call a proactive risk management approach to future development, uh, examining uh, the current uh, zoning and permissions throughout the town, understanding what can be done now by right um, and what impacts that might have and what changes we uh, might suggest to be submitted to the town uh, in terms of changing bylaws. Uh, zoning, et cetera, in order to uh, make sure that uh, future development is moving in a direction that sort of the uh, consensus of the town finds right, rather than uh, having a lot of uh, very antiquated regulation and zoning and permissions that, you know, we've been carrying forward for decades. Um, you know, I, uh, something I frequently talk about and think is that, you know, Maynard being the the small community is that it is and, and the constraints that that places upon it makes sort of adds an extra weight to every development right there's not that much room left to develop um, we have to make sure that those developments are in congruence with our principles and the needs of the town uh, lest we run into difficulties um. Thanks. Uh, let, let me follow that up with something you just mentioned about you know, the limited space. Um, I guess, are you thinking that something the planning board may start to look at in the next year would be redevelopment principles? Oh, I think that would be a wonderful thing. <coughs> um, because, in, you know, in, in the relatively short term, depending on you know, how much the economy continues to heat up and how much development we see, uh, we could rapidly be in a situation where the, all the undeveloped land in town is, is conservation land, town-owned, government land, uh, those sort of things. In which case, any development then of necessity becomes redevelopment. And, you know, we're going to face that situation, you know, if not in 10 or 15 years, in five years, or who knows. But in, in you know, it's something... Uh, all of these things, you know, something I've become acutely sensitive to through the, uh, the year I've served on the board is that, you know, decisions made at time X, you know, actually become critical 15, 20 years down the line. 
and you don't know that at the time. So uh, developing things well in advance, especially things that are hard to change, uh, seems to be a pretty important thing to focus on. Sure. Thanks. Terrence? Yes. Uh, thank you for volunteering. I know it's uh, you uh, as an alternate there. For, for a bit. Yeah, I, uh, you know, it's funny, I, I, there were two votes in the last year that I did not participate in. One I couldn't by statute because it was the subdivision, Keen, and the other one, uh, everyone happened to be there. <laughs> okay. And my question along those lines is, you would obviously be well versed in, you know, the protocols of the board, because you've been an alternate, you've been <coughs> on the board for a while. So your experience with the board, knowing how things go, be easy for you to ramp up because you're already there. Yeah, it's um, we can lead out. To my other question to Kevin, is there anybody else that's applied to or shown interest in the seat as well that we'd be interviewing, or is Andrew the only one? Andrew is the only one specifically that has seeked the permanent position. We have interest in available seats, uh, and specifically have expressed interest in uh, the alternate seat, assuming that Andrew um, becomes appointed to the permanent seat. Thank you. That's Certainly. It. Um, and one of the questions that um, Dave Gavin asked you, we, we talked about um, accelerated. You'd like to see some things accelerated. Well, the process of but looking the, forward. So, what what's but you know knowing the planning board through being the liaison and talking with Bill Nemzer, what are the what are the any particular items that you'd like to see accelerated along those lines? Well, you know, in particular, any specifics, I guess. Well, I think it's, it's the things I mentioned. I think re redeveloping our uh, baseline regulations for the board, um, looking at, for instance, any kind of redevelopment principles, as Jason mentioned. Um, but I think taking the time, and if, you know, the, the master plan and the housing production plan are going to happen on their own pace anyway, um, or the not new master plan, but I think uh, revised master plan. Um, but I think what we do need to do is take and again, this is a matter of taking time during meetings when we don't have hearings ongoing um, to do the work, um, to do the things I mentioned, for instance, to really do the assessment of what's open and available and zoned in town, what permissions really exist in town, to have a good feeling for what is there in detail to be able to determine what we need to change going forward. Um, to some extent, it's a matter of catch up, right? You know, the board is, is frequently extremely busy. Um, you know, and our, we've used up, you know, 7 to 10.30, and it's all been a public hearing, and there's no time for anything else. Um, so I think it's a matter of, you know, hopefully, stream, are these new regulations that, that we're working on were streamlined? This would have saved us in the past year probably seven or eight hours of, of meeting time um, <coughs> once we redo these, uh, because there's been a huge amount of time spent on, you know, well, which document is this, and don't they really have this, and, you know, no, oh, now they need to come back next week, so we need to continue, and then we need to continue again. Uh, so you're being much more prescriptive about, you know, you need to have documents X, Y, and Z. You need to have, you know, drawings of this, that, and the other thing. And if you don't, you're not even coming in for a hearing. And that, so that piece of sort of forward-looking work will enable us to save more time to continue the process of proactively addressing the issues that face development in this town. Sorry, that got a little long winded. Oh, that's okay. That's fine. Tim? Well, thank you for seeking a full time role. Uh, Certainly. After hearing that last piece, it sounds like you have much to get, much to get on, plenty of ideas and experience to back it up. So uh, I will leave you with that. Mr. Chair, could I? Yes, sir. Comment? Just a comment for the board. Um, I fully would support uh, Andrew's appointment. I look at um, the last year that he served as an alternate as similar to um, how we've done in the past with our reserve officers. There's such a considerable amount of work, especially with the planning board, and such a huge learning curve um, you know, when it, as it comes to statute, et cetera, and a uh, considerable amount of time that's invested as an alternate. So appreciate that. And certainly, uh, you know, he's at a position now where you know, undoubtedly uh, can slide into that seat and uh, is the right candidate for the, that slot. So. He has my support um, for what it's worth. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. Can I ask a question, Mr. Chairman? Is this for a full-time position on the planning board, or is he alternate? He is moving from alternate to full-time position, if appointed. He's been the alternate. Yes, he has. Because when you go to the meeting, <coughs> okay, 
you have the alternate show up to fill in. You don't have something that says he's the alternate when he's at the meeting because you can question that because the way the law is situated, if he doesn't attend the previous meeting, he's supposed to avail himself on the minutes of the previous meeting to find out what's been going on. They changed the law back a few years ago because most people were, they were questioning, you know, the fact that they didn't attend the hearing, so they didn't know what was going on, so they changed the law. So that's why I was asking, because I've never, all the planning board hearings I went to, I never saw a thing up there that says he was an alternate member, that's all. Thank, we, uh, Thank you. Hi, Vic. Um, we uh, pretty scrupulously attend to, uh, I think it's the Mullen Act is the name of it, right? Uh, in terms of who is able to vote on which, uh, items based on attendance uh, it's something we track very closely i do know that a few times that i've been there i've seen it you know the questions back and forth among yourself so i can verify that so um no further questions any further questions no okay um, i make a motion to appoint andrew demore as a permanent member of the um, um planning board second with Second by Jason. Okay. <coughs> discussion. All in favor? Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Board. <coughs> thank you, Vic. Mr. Chairman, one question. Uh, is, is Ms. Dolan not attending? Not this see uh, Ms. Dolan. Um, She's so. not pr currently a. Uh, a red board of registrar she is currently not it's a new appointment um town clerk has uh stated that she supports her appointment um she has served and worked with the uh, town clerk and other with <coughs> other, other hats and she's also been a a, a coa member in the past um no, but, a current, she, a current, she or she can't yeah she is this letter in dropbox her letter that we have uh, a copy of it should be in the Okay. Yeah, we, I, she definitely sent in a letter that we, I saw somewhere. Okay. She did. It's, in the pack. it's the one that's a handwritten. Yeah, okay, yes, I, I read it. Um, Is it appropriate for me to read her letter to the board? Sure. Or to her? Yeah. I'll read her letter to us in regards to dear sirs. I am writing to express my interest on being on the board of registrars. I spoke briefly with Michelle last week, and she informed me of the opening. I have previously been on the voters list and was also a warden for about a year and a half. I am currently with the Council on Aging and do have an interest in working with the town in any way I can. If possible, I'd like to be on the, on the voters list again, but not as warden. Anita Dolan, Chance Farm Lane, Maynard. And you said, Kevin, that Town Hall supports her appointment? Yes, the town clerk um, <coughs> specifically, uh, which is this role is uh, yeah, who, who they uh, work with the closest. So she didn't write a letter of intent? She did. She did. Oh, she did. It's the handwritten. Handwritten <coughs> notice. Uh, handwritten her computer. Her yeah, computer's down. There it is. Just before Andrew's. <laughs> I, uh, Although I prefer to have her here, I, I, I think it's probably appropriate in this instance, uh, given that the, uh, the clerk's office has suggested that they support the recommendation. So uh, you know, I'll make a motion to uh, appoint Anita Dolan as a member, uh, as a, I guess the appropriate term is as a member of the Board of Registrars or as a Board of Registrar um, for the Town of Maynard. I'll second it. Questions? Discussion? Okay. All in favor? Okay, the next item is item number nine, the um, Board of Selectmen's meeting calendar approval. Which we all have. Was in the, that was in the packet too. Right? That was in the packet. August 11th is starred. Why yeah, so I can speak to that. Um, August 11th and May 16th both have a star. 
May 16th is just note of the uh, annual town okay. meeting. Okay. Um, August 11th can actually be removed from this calendar. It was uh, as of today. Uh -huh. um, last week we were looking at uh, specifically, and I'm going to talk about this later this evening, the TA report with regards to rail trail action items and the need for um, board action. The uh, August 11th time frame is, isn't going to work and we'll be able to deal with the issues at our regularly scheduled meeting on the 18th um, due to advertised 30 day advertised hearings and so forth. That uh, August 11th date uh, is too soon. It's not going to be needed. So we can remove that. And the other item I would note is the uh, May 4th meeting is a Wednesday. Uh, May 3rd this year is the scheduled local annual election. Um, so that's being proposed as uh, May 4th as a Wednesday. It's the only other change. Is this your copy that I need to sign or can I scribble on this? You can scribble. Just ask him. I don't want to get in trouble. Um. <coughs> Becky, when you have a chance, can you just print out a copy of that? Because uh, I don't have this attached to a printer anywhere. So I believe, Chris, if there were, I think there were four or five copies in the, in the chairman's package. I only have, I only have one. You have mine. I, have, I only have one left. We got know. the school calendar. We got the school calendar, but I don't see. Well, maybe there's only one. Left. I only see the one copy. But when you get a chance, yeah, I'll just shuffle Just remove the eleventh uh, off. Thank you. Okay. So, we need a motion to accept this calendar. Yes. So I move that we accept the Board of Selectmen's calendar as as presented. Second. Any discussion about the calendar? Can I take a quick look at it? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no. <coughs> Better get better eyes. I'm sorry, none of these dates are good for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Did you did you second it, Dave? Yes, I, I did, did, yeah. All right, so we had a brief discussion. Any more questions? All in favor of accepting the calendar? Thank you. Next, uh, this was this was my predecessor's favorite part of the year. It's the uh, liaison assignments. <coughs> Does everybody have the copy of the old assignments? That was in the packet too. Yeah, I thought I saw it. It's just finding it is always yeah. the problem. <laughs> this TSBC. <coughs> Towards the bottom. I uh, yeah, I want to say it's 46 of 53. Yes, you're correct, Jason. Where are the numbers? All right, so I guess I'll ask if there's anybody that um, is on any committee that they're on now that they'd like to not be on going forward. <laughs> <coughs> well put. Okay. Uh, what is TSBC? Town, Town School, School Building, Building Committee. Committee. Oh. Okay. They don't meet. Oh. Sorry, I can see that it's not even in the list from last year. I don't see it on there. Where is it on this it? list now? I don't see I don't ADA. See the new ones are ADA is not on the, the larger list, is it? No. I don't see it on there. Huh? There isn't a... Uh, Board of Appeals is on there, right? There is not an no. ADA. Board of Appeals is not on there. What list are you looking at, Chris? I have two He's lists. From the, uh, I have the, the list from the... The agenda the, report. The agenda, the agenda report. report has a different... Oh. <coughs> that's but it's a different <laughs> list, right? So Some of them are on there. Yeah, I mean, I, truthfully, the ADA, the registrars, and the school building committee can all be school inactive. School building committee, for all intents and purposes, until, has been yeah. disbanded, although yeah. it still exists just in case. Okay. So those the ADA, we, we don't need no, to fill. Don't have it. And the Board of Appeals? Uh, board of Registrars. They don't. 
the last two and the first one on the on the agenda report okay so are inactive so we we should assign liaisons with the remaining okay so I do not see the Board of Appeals on the, the list for the of current assignments no is that new or we just hadn't filled it I don't recall that should be I mean that's an active that's the zoning Board of Appeals this is EBA okay. in the town okay so we'll stop the list they don't meet that yeah they they're <coughs> they meet as needed they meet as needed yeah okay. maybe the appeals do Board of, the Board of Appeals yeah as needed. EBA. it's about six okay. times a year they might meet depending right. on what so projects. I'll just go down the list David, are you are you still okay with aging finance committee and cultural council? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Yep, I'm willing to. Uh, I'd I'd like to stick with with finance, and presume and you know I'd like to stick with all of them. But if somebody wants one of them, I'm certainly not. Uh, but my number one would be finance, just because that's where I was born. Okay. I don't even see it on there actually. Yeah. It's yeah. So maybe they just assumed. I don't, I don't, see, it on that list. I don't see it on that list either. Yeah, so maybe they just assumed. Okay. Um, Tim, are you okay with those two? The same two? Yep. Conservation and community preservation? I am. <coughs> um, Jason, are you okay with those three? Um, library and EDC. Okay. Yes, but I will defer Board of Assessors through our uh, newest. Uh, yes, newest that's selection. a good idea. We'll put Mr. Donovan on the Board of Assessors. <laughs> and I will pick up the uh, Board of Appeals. Okay. Anybody want to volunteer to be the oh, the planning board? I'll still do that. I can't get away from Mr. Nemzer and those books. Would you like um, me to relieve you of the recreation you committee? Can, you can take care of the recreation committee, although I don't see on this on the list. I see two that Selectman Cranshaw used to have that aren't reflected on this list they either. Be, so. yeah. They should be. They well, should be on the list, yeah. right? Yeah, and my, my other question we're gonna is... Get, we're um, going to give you those. You're going to get those, too. take those, too? The library, which is an elected board... Right. Um, <coughs> should there be one to the housing authority? Um, Even though it's really a separate, but it's an elected board similar to library and school committee and yeah, um, especially if there might be issues <coughs> coming up this year pertaining to. Um, affordable housing questions or uh, I never thought about it I mean it they're they're, they're very, I know they're very, they're very defined as a quasi yeah, want four government parents. entity I mean did you want four or you want three? even more so than you know the library certainly the school committee well so to be it's clear it's a liaison position it's but just to communicate that and so that they have someone board. they can either speak to or someone who can speak to them from the board with the authority of the board so It's not a sitting member. It's not a voting. It's just a point of contact. Yeah, it, it, that's okay. That's why it may be, you know, <coughs> perhaps, um, even though again we there is a defined differentiation between all of them. Perhaps though, this year we may want to have a closer relationship <coughs> with them. Not because we one of our former members is now a member there, but rather because we are, uh, as I said, facing <coughs> some issues that perhaps they would be interested in hearing from us and us from them and so perhaps rather than having a liaison we just periodically have an open invitation for them to come to visit but do we receive any uh, postings from them with regards to only the time <laughs> yeah do we get their minutes no we don't get any direct commit thing from them. It's any Can you request their minutes. Sure. Yeah, they're it's public, so we should. Be able to. Okay. Well, leave good enough alone. But I think that we should have some type of, uh, of contact point for certain. Okay, so I would have to agree with Selectman Gavin actually on that. All right, so we'll. I'll I take. We should or we should. should have somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just 
kind of reconfirm this list with you, Becky. Okay. And then we'll send it out to everybody and make sure we're at the, the right things. Perfect. Is everybody okay with that plan? Anybody object Did to that plan? Did someone get appointed to the housing? We do housing library EDC. <coughs> we put, um, well, yeah, Terrence was going to do the library in the EDC. Housing? We didn't, we didn't do a housing. And board of assessors. Excuse me? And board of assessors. He's, in, he's on the board. Terrence yeah. is going to do the assessors. Yeah. Yeah. And then recreation. Uh, Tim Egan is going to do recreation. Or straight. Let's head out to a stuff. This is the biggest debate we've had all night. Yeah. What about, <laughs> where is housing on the list? It's not on our it's list. That's, that no that was idea. sort of the point. Okay. <clears throat> I'd be more than happy to share it with you if you'd like. No, I, I'm not saying that, that, that I necessarily want to be it, but I'll certainly <laughs> share it. I'll certainly share it with you. Sure. That's, okay. that's fine. It's nice. It's in the sandbox. Okay. So I'll go over this list with, with, list with Becky in the next couple of days, and we'll send it to everybody to get verified and approved. Okay, so the next item, Kevin, you want to tell us a little bit about the next item, number 11, the liquor license proposal? Yes. Um, you have the board on that around? So you have before you um, some edits to the submitted, uh, which has since been created, a, a bill that's been filed as a home rule petition from our last annual, a year ago, uh, from our town meeting vote to submit the um, home rule petition the the committee for um they call it the committee for consumer protection and licensure has requested uh amendments be made and they've sent over the proposed edits which you see before you uh, their aim is to make all of the uh, liquor license bills uniform across the state and what you see in the, a lot of the line item additional language which is um, more in depth but the summary of it is essentially that they're Looking, and the amendment would include a three-year moratorium on uh, transferring a liquor license um, is the biggest piece to it. So essentially, the uh, the applicant that receives one of these additional licenses it would have to hold on to the license for three years, and um, that's referenced in the amended piece. So you have what you have before you is the sections where <coughs> it, it shows the uh, added language, the underlying sections, and then the part behind that that's labeled clean version is all of the edits taken out of it um so that, that's where it reflects the uh, amendments that, so that that's why the two of them are different yeah okay yeah uh can i ask a couple, sure. couple questions i'm a little bit concerned about some of the language that's in there and and perhaps we need to get some type of clarification and one of the issues is um specifically it talks about location of the license versus um you know whatever and here's my concern say for example a, a business at some unknown location opens up as a restaurant the way it reads and I'll read it it says um, which section are you this is under section 4 it says uh, if a it, on uh, line 15 if a license granted pursuant to this act is canceled revoked or no longer in use at the location of original issuance it shall be returned physically with all the legal rights privileges and restrictions pertaining thereto to the licensing authority and the licensing authority may then grant the license to a new applicant at the same location under the same conditions as specified in this act if the applicant files with the licensing authority blah 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 and it references location earlier if I remember correctly in the uh, in the legislation as well my concern is let's say for example a business opens at a, at a given location uh, whatever that may be and then they decide you know we have a restaurant there they have a liquor license and then they decide they want to change it to a Chuck E. Cheese that doesn't need a liquor license <coughs> that gets returned back to the town but the town can't return it anywhere else because there is a location attached to it which means we can't go anywhere else with it and here's a concern relative to the 129 Parker Street project um, when you talk location is a location an address because my concern is they talked to, to us here during our, our meeting with them that they wanted to basically, for lack of a better phrase, condoize the property and have separate owners and whatever. So if there's a pro piece of property that, that we dedicate a license to and then that particular business leaves, based on the legislation language that I see here, we cannot transfer that license anywhere. It has to stay at that location. And that location, if it's a building, 
really ties our hands and, and limits what we can do with it. So I think we need some clarification from the legislature or from council as to what location means. Um, but we're limiting ourselves tremendously with our ability to be flexible with these licenses. And I think part of the reason we got six was because we were talking about three for one location and uh, one area and three for another area of town. But this li limits us to locations versus areas, and that could be concerning to us. And we might be facing, now I realize if the legislature is going to be going to focus <coughs> on specifics for everybody, I guess the rules are the same everywhere. But that's my concern when I read the legislation. I don't know what others' thoughts are on it. I, yeah. I, I, would, I would echo that. I would just say that <coughs> the example that I would use would be, an establishment in Maynard decides to move to a different location in Maynard, but it's the same business. Correct. So if the location is the location, then you know that you know how can a company then expand, for example, to go to, to new space, right? So yeah, I mean, you're saying. keep keep in mind this is an amendment that was filed by that committee and is due to be acted on, and it's my understanding communication with Rep. Hogan's office and so forth that they've had, as well as with our legal team, is that the language that's being proposed is being what's proposed throughout the state. I would caution that if we don't support the language that I don't know where we're going to end up in queue. Um, you know, we're, we're scheduled for action on it. It says three or moratorium um, solely on that license. Um, I, I get it, but uh, also... Can we just get, get clarification, though, Kevin, on what that location term actually means? Not that we're necessarily going to, that I'm not going to support it, but I mean, what does that location term actually, what's the definition? Is the definition specifically you know, 132 XYZ Street, or is it a broader term than just using the word location in there? That's all I'm, I'm looking for. Yeah, other than it, it, it uh, I don't know where it's in process. I know that they keep asking me for the letter from the selectmen, which means it's getting ready to be acted on. If we don't vote on it tonight, we don't, uh, we don't the chair doesn't uh, sign the letter to approve the amended language, then I just... Uh, when did we learn about the amended language, Kevin? Hesitant about it being delayed. Um, where did I get that from? I think like the sometime of, like towards the end of June, third week of June or something like that. I think from Courtney. Again, uh, you know, conversation with um, with legal is they've seen others, and this is the proposed language that they're that they're proposing putting in uh, before everybody. For all the communities, I, I mean, it may end up becoming a moot point if the other legislation passes, which is that it's a local control, it's a local decision. Is that back in front of the legislature? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that was Governor Patrick's original legislation. Well, that was filed <coughs> with the economic development bill. That's true. That's yeah. different. That was voted down, and it, well, so it was refiled under a separate filed as its own uh. as its own bill. <coughs> I don't. Uh, advocate not supporting it tonight my comment is simply it's, it's, it's a lesser of two evils we need it but I would like to understand exactly what it is that we can actually do you know or a proprietor can actually do right. going forward right worst case is we do get them and you know they're the not able to do certain things in the future with their business plan that it is what it is right but I'd, I would like clarification but yeah all's, all's I have is the floor amendment which the floor amendment it, was it becomes moved, then extremely to important as to who we give them to yeah. Um, because again, uh, uh, you know, s s use an example of a business that we know or that we are hope very hopeful is coming. For example, the brewery, if they have their location at uh, Clock Tower and uh, or at uh, Mill and Main, and then they decide, very unlikely, but uh, they decide that they want to move their location to a bigger location, either within Mill and Main or somewhere else within our community based on this language the way I read it now I'm not a lawyer but uh, you know you talk location if they move to a different location we can't give them the license and that seems very very restrictive and I'm surprised that the legislature would uh, would encourage that um, but we've got to be very careful about how we uh, you know about, uh, about supporting it if indeed it's it's tying our hands and and really limiting our our it's business nothing opportunities or, or some with a restriction Excuse I mean, me? it's either nothing or some with a restriction and the restriction is again a, a three or moratorium i'm hopeful that the 
brew pub would not be considered within this piece. So we're talking about establishments that we don't even know about yet. <coughs> yeah, um, I get, I get that. I, I'm just, I was just using a, an example. Right, sure. Example. And the 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 comments that I got back from legislature was that their aim is to make all the lo the local license the liquor license bills uniform across the state. So they got to pick on somebody. So at some point they made a decision that this is the language that they're looking for, and it, you know it wasn't Hudson, but it was Maynard. And I assume that moving forward, any petitions that, w that are raised, they would be making the same amendment. Uh, Do we know how also. Representative Hogan voted on this amendment? Uh, she doesn't vote. She sponsored the bill. Oh. It was She's before. She's not on the committee. Yeah, that's it's a, before got the it. uh, committee. You have it. It's probably, you can pull it up where they're at. But, yeah, they're looking to... Uh, get the amendment attached, approved, and then they'll uh, get the bill on its way to passage ASAP. It was from Rep. Hogan's office. Do you have any comments, questions? This one? No, I'm all set. We're also looking at um, some materials we're reviewing right now with that we've received that, that show that the town is eligible for two additional liquor licenses in January of uh, 2016. Uh, as well as some additional licenses in 20, 20, 2020. Oh, Just yes. because? Yeah. Um, <coughs> uh, there's various tri yeah, quota um, piece of it. So that we're reviewing, but we feel, you know, based on the information we received, that that's very plausible. So we could be looking at those additional ones um, as well. And then if any action is taken on the, um, on the other uh, bill that's been filed to give local control, if there's uh yeah and i don't know kind of what i don't know what the the thought is on that if you know where the support is but last from the information we've had even at the uh, mass municipal association the mma group has been the one that's trying to push that article in this uh that bill and has have really had a strong um policy support of it um and advocacy so it it might have some legs i mean i'm, I'm very supportive of the um of their effort the legislature's effort to basically, um, you know, take away the marketability of these things because I think that's the intent. Yes. You know, yeah. of the whole thing. Um, but I don't like the idea, as I've expressed, of um, of limiting where specifically a location where these things can can go. And uh, I don't know what else the others on the board think, but. We don't we don't know Kevin when this this will be acted on. A yeah, from um, Rep Hogan's chief of staff, she said as soon as possible. Um, as soon as we get we get them back uh, confirmation. I don't know when it's when it's before them though. No, it was heard uh, <coughs> a couple times. Uh, it was heard definitely in June, and it's gone through the the motions. When's he and when's the other the other vote going to take place? to make it a local thing? If it goes, if that I don't know where that is, and do you know where that is? In Andrew? committee Have somewhere too. It's in committee, yeah. The civil service? No, the bill for uh, local control on liquor licenses, like uh, it, quorum. It, it committee at best. Yeah. <coughs> One from MMA. Yeah. Yeah, it's not on the floor. All right. It, it's in queue somewhere. Okay. So I know I'm it's been filed. I I agree with the the with both Terrence and David that not knowing is puts us in a bad position, but. If it comes before, you know, if it gets to this in queue and we haven't signed the letter, do we lose the opportunity? What, what happens then? Is that what, where do we go back to the beginning of the process? Are we, are we in a position where it would probably if be we right. don't accept the lesser, you know, if we don't accept it as it is, do we will we lose the opportunity to get the additional licenses? If there's proposed language, it would be referred back to committee. The committee would have to discuss our proposed language and then make some I mean, even if we had a definition of location vote on that without this is the <coughs> brewery still going to be able to open say in the fall as it anticipates yeah we're anticipating so we have enough they have gotten one from us as well as the state um i don't know where they're at with the state stuff but as far as uh our all alcohol license they've come in we've met with them and they picked up an application 
So their so intention, they're, they're their in intention is to apply for the available license that we have right now. Oh, how long would it take us to find a um, definition for the word location? Um, yeah. I mean, I could get an answer tomorrow. We could put it off and uh, take it up on the 21st. I just don't know, again, I don't know where it is um, to get back on. I don't know. I don't have a if they've scheduled it or not. All she stated oh. is that it would be as soon as possible. So we need, what, 48 hours to post a meeting in the Board of Selectmen? Yeah. We got to a point where someone get back to you with the information we could, we could go that route and get it done before the 21st if we have to. You advocate yeah. for a special meeting? I'm, well, advocating, I'm, meeting. I'm advocating having the information in front of us to allow us to make the right decision for the town. And if that means we have to come in for a 20 minute meeting and go through this language quick, once we know exactly what they mean by location, I, I don't have a problem coming in for 20 minutes to go through something that important. But yeah, no, I just clarifying that you, I know, think you don't want to put it to the 21st. You I don't want to, want to put it off to the 21st, yeah. but I'd like to know, to David's point, what does the word location specifically mean in this instance? So uh, why it's, I think it's important. Why doesn't the board just authorize the chair to execute a letter on their behalf? I mean, it's either going to be this or it's going to be something revised. I mean, it, it, I think the premise everybody's in agreement with. I don't know that we need a meeting to determined, yeah, we, we like it as is, <coughs> we're stuck with it versus a location. I mean, I, I don't know if the, the board would support that. I mean, the letter is, uh, I don't know. Just explain a, explain a letter to, to, to a new selectman. What, what are you, at, what are you we're just proposing? Uh, what I'm proposing is the motion, is basically the letter. Absent the motion, what are, you, are you proposing something separate that the chair could author a letter on behalf of the board? Yeah, the chair can act on chair behalf, can act of the board. On behalf of the board if you uh, if you vote an authorization. So once we get and then you know um, we get further speak to us offline, presumably, um, yeah. although not sequentially, <laughs> uh, to report to us what the findings are and uh, and act with our authority, regardless of how he does, regardless of how we might want him to act, he has the authority to act. Yeah, I mean, I, do, I don't know how, I mean, I can get an I can reach Representative Hogan's office quickly in the morning and I uh, frequently communicate with Courtney. Problem is she's probably going to need to get clarification from council on exactly what location means as well. And uh, it might, there might be some lag time there, but nonetheless, I don't, you know, uh, it's just a suggestion, you know, offering that the chair could execute a letter on behalf of the board whatever direction it goes I'm fine with that um, if if Chris is fine with that huh? I'm, I'm okay with it I, I you know I just want to know I just want to make sure everybody's satisfied with the definition and with the with the answers I don't, you know once once we know what it's what that means you it's know probably much broader than uh, I mean I don't know but looking at it you know from a contractual standpoint, if I were on the losing end of an argument um, and I went into court and I said to a judge based on my experience with various insurance related issues, the way the contract is worded, it's very specific location, <coughs> what does location mean and that's the issue. Okay, so. You're limited to location. Okay, Kevin, so if we wanna, if the board wishes to authorize me to act on this item to what's what's the language have to become I, I, um, a proper language to do that well, I can make a motion to authorize the chair to act on behalf of the board uh, once clarification is received on the language before the legislature relative to the uh, house 3192 yeah that's sufficient. You could or you just did? I just made a motion. Okay. I just said you could. I wasn't sure okay. if you actually did. I will make, I did right. make, I will make a motion. You did make the motion. You Jason, will or you did? Jason, you uh, I did. second it or? <laughs> I did. Hey. Oh, you had Jordan, yeah. I'll second the motion. Right. You want yeah. to no. Is there any discussion about the motion in regards to H3192? Should I send it right to Keith? 
All in favor to authorize me to act on the selection's behalf on that item? Yeah, specifically, we're looking at this okay. section, this line item. Okay, Kevin, so we just need to find out what the word location means. <coughs> we're on it. Item, item number 12, Community Compact Application, Crosstown Connect. Kevin, let us know what that is. Yes, yeah, so I prepared a, um, a memo for the board to kind of outline uh, the intention behind this as well as the uh, application. <coughs> the requirement for such a compact requires, uh, again, a letter um, for the application issued uh, from the chair of the Board of Selectmen. Um, just did a quick overview for those in the audience and listening in. I'll, I'll read through the memo briefly. Um, in June 2015, the town of Maine and I was notified that, the cro that Crosstown Connect had been selected to receive a local government excellence award from the International City County Management Association, known as ICMA. The award is a community partnership award for communities between 10,000 and 49,999 population. It recognizes programs or processes that demonstrate innovation, excellence, and success in multi-participant involvement between or among a local government and other governmental entities, private sector businesses, individuals, or nonprofit agencies to improve the quality of life for residents to provide more efficient and effective services. Um, this award is going to be provided uh, for the towns of uh, Acton, Boxborough, Littleton, Maynard, and Westford at the ICMA annual conference in Seattle, Washington in the fall. Um, there'll be a special recognition ceremony for such award and, uh, and more to come on that. But that was the impotence behind um, moving forward with a, uh, the community's received notification of this uh, award. It's a, a big thing and um, kind of came out of that was, you know, we ought to look at a uh, filing a joint application for a community uh, compact with the Baker Polito administration for the Crosstown Connect program. Um, initiative is a great way to get the administration's attention for what we're trying to accomplish with the Crosstown Connect. Community compact application process requires the chair of the Board of Selectmen to sign, hence the need for the BOS agenda approval. Uh, that's why it's before you this evening. Uh, quick overview, uh, again, for the audience. The community compact is a voluntary mutual agreement entered into between the Baker Polito administration and individual cities and towns of the Commonwealth. In a community compact, the community will agree to implement at least one best practice that they select from across a variety of areas. The community chosen best practice will be reviewed between the Commonwealth and the municipality to ensure that the best pra practice chosen are unique to the municipality and reflect <coughs> needed areas of improvement. Once approved, the written agreement will be generated and signed by both the municipality and the Commonwealth. Uh, the compact also articulates the commitments the Commonwealth will make on behalf of all communities. Um, just to highlight on the application, the area that's been identified as a best practice area is transportation and citizen safety uh, as a selection for best practice. And um, there's a uh, several paragraphs, five paragraphs <coughs> description as to why our communities feel um, that that's a best practice area and that's the area we chose uh, related to the uh, Transportation Management Association, the TMA that we have with Crosstown Connect. Um, one couple notes before discussion, uh, all of the five communities at this point, uh, four out of the five have all approved the application at their uh, selectman level. Uh, Maine is the last meeting uh, for such action. And uh, a couple of other reasons why, in addition to the recognition, it provides opportunities uh, for that have these compact collaborations to uh, get additional points on grant applications, uh, receive um, assistance from state agencies that you may or may not, the door may or may not be open to, so you can, you can re receive some uh, specialized technical assistance from uh, particularly Matt's DOT, because uh, that's what we're referring to. Um, but so that's, that's where it's at. I'm just looking for the, the board to support the application and um, prepare something. I'll have Chris uh, sign it if approved. Any questions, discussion about the? Just real quick, okay. I want to say uh, congratulations, Kevin, and to the, all the members who are being recognized for the program. Um, 
you know, I think what's been put together has been put together with a lot of hard work, a lot of effort over the years, and making some good progress. And I think the recognition from the ICMA is uh, well deserved. Um, to me, this is pretty much uh, this is pretty straightforward. Um, <coughs> I'm definitely on board. Yeah, I would uh, I would concur, and I congratulate. Yeah. all parties and I think this is just another example of you know um, taking an opportunity and working with it in a regional fashion to uh, to be successful and uh, there was a lot of hard work that went into uh, getting Crosstown Connect up and running and and whatever and I, whatever recognition we can get for that um, is well worth it and deserved so um, and uh, who's going to Seattle I am actually. <laughs> Who did you think was going? Yeah, um, Andrew attended ICMA last year. It's, uh, it's essentially for those that aren't aware, it's essentially our national international association of the MMA. So Mass Municipal Association is the state chapter. Um, ICMA is the, the national international uh, sort of parent umbrella organization, and uh, you know, we're, we're members of ICMA, and it's a great organization. So Andrew got to go to last year's. Great. Where was that, Boston? Charlotte. <laughs> Uh, Andrew Charlotte. Was Charlotte, yeah. In the middle. Uh, years ago, it was Boston. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been the year I got selected. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I appreciate that. I, you know, obviously, uh, I I get to uh, receive a lot of the accolades by sitting in the chair I'm at. But there's been a great collaboration between the leaders of all five communities. Um, Andrew's done an excellent job. He's he's actually served as the co-chair of the of the uh, Transportation Management Association, uh, part of our Crosstown Connect TMA. Uh, co-chair with uh, selectman from Acton, um, so it's it's been a great program, and we it's getting a lot of traction, and it's getting a lot of uh, recognition um, as best practices, certainly throughout the state as well as throughout the country. So appreciate that. Quick question: uh, Why are we last of the five communities? Just where they felt la last night. The um, I think it was Westford. Just time. The last to meet. Last Physically, to meet. the last to meet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah, I, yeah, you know, yeah. I, no, I, I think uh, some of them met like they they meet like Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, so they they've been approved. Okay. This is the first <coughs> meeting we've had since the decision was made to apply. The first sentence on the second page says private sector partners, including Clock Tower Place. Does Saracen have to be involved with Mill and Maine, or is this the same people? It's actually yeah, it actually is Saracen um, in Mill and Maine. We've had conversations. They're supportive of it. Crosstown uh, Clock Tower Place, uh, Joe Mullen, who was with uh, Clock Tower Place, Wellesley Management at the time, um, was an initial partner with, um, as the first private partner um, with the communities. And they still, to this day, occupy space in uh, Clock Tower, Mill and Main. Um, the office for Crosstown Connect is located in that building. Um, it will continue to be located there. I've met with uh, Saracen, and they're, uh, they want to keep them. They supportive of the program, and uh, it's just uh, at this point, just a matter of um, management changing. But they're they're definitely involved and interested and supportive. I would imagine uh, Mill and Main can use that as a marketing tool because it's a way to get employees Absolutely. that may not live in our area to. Yeah, hopefully, you know, the direction where you know, this goes, and and looking at. Um, you know, it's really the what we've been doing late, uh, mostly is the uh, obviously the council on aging dispatch piece of it. Um, the bigger future projection is there's this big void for transportation in all of our areas, and uh, certainly um, that would be a, a huge incentive if Mill and Main uh, starts to fill up and uh, provide opportunities for transportation to and from the Acton train station. And ideally, hopefully, we get to a point where we're looking at a reverse commute situation, and we're getting folks that may live in, you know, live in the city that actually work out in Maynard, and we can get them out here. So it's uh, absolutely to to Mill and Maine and Saracens' benefit to support this as well. Any more questions? Okay, no questions. Make a motion. I move to submit a joint application with the towns of Acton, Boxborough, Littleton, and Westford for a community compact with the Baker Polito Administration for the Crosstown Connect Transportation Management Association as a best practice for transportation. Second. 
Any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay, Kevin, item number 13 is the economic development updates. Wow. Already there. All right, so I'll keep going. Um, economic development, <coughs> not a whole lot to report this meeting. Um, there was a meeting that was canceled late yesterday uh, due to the conflict with the chairman of the Economic Development Committee. Uh, so they, they were not able to meet. The meeting got canceled and is rescheduled now for July 14th um, with some updates on activities that they're working on. Um, I know uh, some of the selectmen uh, were present on July 1st, the housing production plan meeting, um, which was fairly well attended. Um, that was presented by MAPC and uh, the sort of the next phase to a bigger um, piece of the uh, housing production plan. Um, at this point, they've received uh, close a little over, I think, 100 uh, surveys received to date. They've extended that um, deadline to submit for uh, for that survey, so that they'll continue to collect that data as they move forward um, with that piece. And. Uh, as we stand there, we're starting to have conversations um, with uh, folks from, I know uh, Bill Nemser, town planner, has met with um, representative of 129 Parker Street with regards to some, uh, some items that they were reviewing, as with, uh, is the case with, he, he did get a chance to meet with um, Henry St. Hilaire, the director of construction with uh, Saracen Properties to look at what's there, I think, um, in the next Certainly within the next couple of months, we'll see a point where uh, Saracen properties may be at a point where they are looking to come to the board to discuss any potential modifications, if any, that are needed uh, for the development agreement. Um, and that, that would be something that to look forward to um, in the near future, because there is some, some items that, that they're going to be looking, not necessarily for zoning changes or items of that case, but certainly uh, some restrictions that are in the development agreement that they see as restrictions that they would like to discuss with the board. Um, more to come on that piece. Um, you've seen in the correspondences there's some uh, updates from the 129 Parker Street project that'll be moving forward. I think the planning board notices uh, for 129 Acton Street there as well. Uh, anything, Andrew, got anything else on economic development to add? Yeah, that's about it. That's it. Any that questions? Yeah, I have a question. The survey. Any way we can? I don't know. You know, I don't know who's who's in charge of that. But is there any way we can get that out in a better way so more people know about it and have access to it? I, just 100 people isn't a lot of people, and there's probably 10 percent of the 100 in this room right now. I was shocked. But I, mean, I was just actually shocked by the response rate. To be honest with you, shocked we got oh, that. Many, shocked we got that many or. No, not we got that many. I mean, we've done other really? surveys in the past and have not gotten that. Type it's of been on some right. people's. You know, so certain people have spread it through social media. I've put it. There. I've pushed it out through my my blog site, which has over 600 uh, users now, likes, if you will, for the Facebook account piece. And then um, he's sent it to anybody who's emailing. He's sent it to <coughs> anybody who has been. He's ever talked to. I think. Um, through, a, through an email distribution. It's on the <coughs> town website. Um, I'm, I'm open to if there's other suggestions that you specifically might have to get the word spread out there. Um, Did we, uh, and it's been on, uh, it's on the town Ac website. Action Unlimited posted something on yes. it, I think, a couple of times. Yes. Um, but Bill, uh, Bill Nemser is kind of leading that whole survey thing. I, I did push my piece up. Okay. <coughs> the COA is doing a newsletter this month, and um, we can add it to that as a, a link or something that goes to every house in town. So that may be a, another pump. Does the COA newsletter separate issue go out electronically as well as through the mail? Uh, we're, we're using a new publishing process starting this month. It has only been sent out uh, via the mail. We've, we've posted them online at, on the town website, but we haven't emailed them to people except on request. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we, we can brainstorm um, you know, uh, other avenues that may have been missed so we could try to get the word out. You're telling me 100 is a lot? That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a fairly, 
considering the topic, I mean, you know, depending on what the interests are, it's yeah, it was. decent. We have 500 voters show up. We can ask them and yeah. see what their normal return rate is. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I do know they're looking for more. That's yeah. why we've, we've right. extended it. Right. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try <coughs> to re-engage uh, the residents. Okay. It's 25% of, of an annual town election without any other accompanying election, which is... It's more than our annual town meeting attendance. <laughs> yeah. <Calm down>. It's <laughs> close. It's close. We're 106 this year. Given our quorum is 75. So okay. Well, that's a, the town <laughs> administrator's report. <laughs> All right. Um, collective bargaining agreements uh, moving along. Um, fire going well, pretty well. The dispatch... Uh, Union agreement is underway, um, as is the custodial facility. I assume you're now into the town administrator report. Yes. Okay. Um, stay tuned. There'll be a little more expansion on that when we get into executive session uh, with regards to uh, collective bargaining. Um, so tonight we uh, had a few appointments. Um, we still have uh, several openings on boards, committees, commissions that were uh, that are available. We're continuing to advertise. There's a couple in queue that have come in as far as requests to uh, boards, committees um, that came in after the agenda was set that are new requests. Um, as I said, we do definitely have uh, two interests, I think at least two interests um, with regards to the planning board alternate seat. Um, so I would expect those to be available at our next uh, and the assessors, um, we received some interest uh, for the vacant um, term, the Board of Assessors seat that uh, Terrence left. Uh, we did receive a request <coughs> today um, for to the board, so that will be on our next agenda as well. And we continue to advertise for the openings. Um, it's on the town website as far as a number and what, what we're looking <coughs> for. It's been been uh, advertised it's been pushed out so again similarly getting the word out there there are openings in uh, for residents that are there we're looking for uh, engaged and interested uh, applicants um, the council on aging clerical position that was <coughs> vacated um, June 30th uh, with uh, David Hull's uh, retirement um, we've advertised been working with uh, um, the COA director and some other folks that sat on that search committee. Um, they received 38 applicants for the council and aging pos clerical position, and uh, the COA director was making an offer this week, and uh, would assume uh, sometime, I think, in the, within the next couple weeks, the individual would start um, as, the, as the clerk. Um, 23 River Street, uh, as you know, I sent a note out, we purchase is completed. Um, we uh, closed on the property, took possession on June 30th. And uh, at this point, you know, can, the ball's sort of in your court. Uh, we can, can be used immediately as parking if desired. Um, at this point, we've checked in with our liability uh, insurance folks, just making sure with regards to um, coverage and uh, we're, we're in good good shape there um, the piece that is is uh, at this point it's all the vehicles and stuff that was stored in the lot have been removed uh, the property is chained as far as access to it and secured um, by the facilities manager and uh, you know it, the intent was to have this as a action agenda item for our next meeting for discussion on moving forward some uh, for those that recall some conversations and some desire that's that's uh, come out of this was the initial conversation um, by the loss of parking throughout town to via the rail trail um, project, which we're going to lose several spots. And uh, the Ma uh, Main and Business Alliance that has reached out to discuss parking needs that they have in, in the businesses in the downtown. Um, one thing that we discussed possible use of this lot would be to offer uh, <coughs> employee permit parking, um, some degree that it would allow downtown businesses to provide parking for their employees, which would then uh, hopefully free up additional spaces for, uh, at in other areas in the municipal lots and, and on street parking for uh, patrons of their establishments. Um, that's an option. Uh, you know, it could be some mix of that. Could be a uh, 
a resident permit parking with uh, employee parking, some variety of that given out. There's currently uh, 32 striped spaces, which you're aware of. The condition of the asphalt's in good shape. Uh, we're looking at um, communication with the facilities uh, manager and, and uh, this, the DPW director looking at potentially what striping, you know, may be able to change to exceed that space or, you know, or restripe type of thing. Uh, but at this point, you know, we're, we're confident that we have 32 available spaces to uh, wh whatever the board uh, deems they would like to utilize that space for, but currently nobody's parking there. Um, at this time, um, if it, we've started to have the conversation with the police chief, if we were to go down the road with enforcement on uh, what you know what kind <coughs> of impact that would be in, in a plan for that with regards to uh, if it was restricted to permit parking, um, sign for you know notices, et cetera, you know less than fifty dollars, we can we can make it happen. So again, uh, unless there's for questions specifically on that now. Um, the, the intention is to have that as a uh, agenda item for um, the 21st. Is there, is there any lighting there? There's one light. That light has been uh, switched over to the town's um, account. It, it was uh, a light that was uh, that was owned by that property that was uh, in the prior owner's name. We have taken uh, control of that bill uh, as of the date of the closing. It's well, the, will the uh, Police chief or the police department give us some sort of assessment as to its, um, you know, yeah. safety yeah. before we stop putting people there. Yep. Chris, if you may, uh, I actually toured the lot last week and met with two people who live right next door. And the first thing they said to me was that light was a problem, uh, not just for safety reasons, but for the way it was installed. It's a nuisance to the actual neighbors that live there. So they're hoping the town takes that into account when they fix when they figure out what the plan is. It's a so nuisance. It shines right in their house, and it's intermittent. It, it, uh, so it could be, if you go view it, it does look like it, it, it was done quickly and just to get it done. Okay. It's on. Um, it, it's not one that's a uh, motion trigger. I think it's continuously on, right? That you noticed? Yeah, and they said, it, uh, the neighbor had said it, it, it comes on, you know, sporadically. It and when like it comes on, it shines. Pump. You know, it's it, cycles. Yeah. Probably yeah, like um, old we'll have uh, we'll certainly have the police department assess the area, and if it's a functional issue, um, yeah, we will have the electrician take a look at it okay. and uh, make some recommendations for lighting. Certainly, uh, mm -hmm. now that it's our control, you know, from a liability standpoint, we want to make sure we provide adequate lighting, and uh, you know, it's a secure oh, and safe so. lot. So, more to come on the twenty-first discussion. Um, let's see, Aspit River Rail Trail easements are in progress. Um, the easement appraisals were expected by July 1st. Uh, as of this afternoon, we, we have received none. Uh, last week and again today, the appraiser was uh, told um, apathetically that this must be resolved quickly. We're expecting uh, the first returns this week. And five of the 27 that are needed, are donations are in place. So we received those donations on five of the 27. And Mass DOT uh, GPI, who is the engineering firm that's working on the project, agree that the time is tight, but we'll get it done. And hence the, uh, the August 18th um, Board of Selectmen meeting is that hard deadline, is that August 11th uh, meeting. We just wouldn't have enough uh, sufficient time for the 30-day hearing advertisement based on uh, posting requirements in anticipation of when we're going to receive those. So. Kevin, if, if I may, relative to the Aspen River Rail Trail, but also separately uh, related to Acton Street, um, a review of our packet of five of May sixth of May f of twenty fifteen. Uh, this evening, I looked at the development agreement with one twenty nine Acton Street. Have we um, have a the access to the easement? Um, with Acton Street's location as of today? Yes. <coughs> we do. I, was, I haven't seen it. I, have you uh, received a copy of it? it I've asked. It, I, I'm it's, it's in the planning docket, so I haven't looked at it. Well, the no. number five on the development agreement said that they, they sh on, and I know this will be of interest to 
the, the chair because uh, of our concern about development agreements and applying them and, mm -hmm. and being consistent with them, quote, shall dedicate on or before June 30th, 2015, an easement to the town consisting of a parcel identified as Assessor's Map 5, Parcel 95, for the purpose of providing access for the Aspet River Rail Trail. If they have not done that, they are in violation of that development agreement. So I, I don't know the status of the exact, they've handed that to us, but they, they were given the document to return to us. And tonight they're meeting with the Conservation Commission and the Conservation Commission agent is our rail trail project manager. Okay. And she indicated that she would be, you know, definitively asking for that. But so in fact, they violated the June 30th deadline of the I, I don't know that. And they may have it, you know, signed or whatever dated June 29th or something. Yeah, okay. Um, I'll follow up with that, uh, Slim again. I did bring that to uh, Linda's attention, yeah. that piece in the development agreement and the requirement. She said she had a donation form that they had and they were ready to sign and get it. I just, I left to confirm but she physically has it in, in Unfortunately, here. I don't think our, that we went as far with our development agreement to include penalties mm -hmm. for failure to right. apply. Um, but we, we definitely specified I, a date. I hope that I hope that they have it done uh, already because you know it's not a good sign if they're violating. Yeah, no, I, I definitely. Uh, I know we discussed date certain, and, and I hope the board supports I've the fact that, that you know that that's important because they have a hearing that that is coming up next week. That if they have not complied, right. maybe the hearing should be canceled because they have to comply. Yeah, let me. Well, let me get a definitive answer on it. I know she's fully aware of it. I've discussed it with her, and um, last I spoke to her, she okay. was getting ready to go. So, so what might we'll be, be one if, of if we learn that they have not, what will be the action that will be taken relative to that hearing? Which hearing is that? Next is Tuesday, they're going to have a hearing on the next steps for at, at the their property board? at the planning board. Yeah, the, the planning board's been instructed that they can hear and open the uh, hearing conduct business on it but they can't close it until the attorney general approves the zoning changes so it'll be open at this point we don't have that from the attorney general so unless we have that before next tuesday there's no way that hearing will be closed at that point if we don't have what you're asking for before then we'll have plenty of time to determine if there's an issue to be acted on They still haven't gone through Conscom. Tonight's their first presentation to them, so yeah. there's going to be a lot of back and forth before anybody starts doing work over there. I just, again, my, my interest is in protecting the town from having them make promises that are not kept, and then we'll find ourselves scrambling down the road for something that, hasn't, that they agreed to that hasn't right. been complied with. Absolutely. We can make them buy the pizzas for that meeting. I think I'll focus. This year we'll get the pizza. Right across the street. Um, <laughs> any other questions on the rail trail stuff? Um, okay. Uh, town hall display case. Uh, we're hoping to get that installed. And um, we reason you don't see anything out there now is it's actively it's being built off site, and the installation piece will be the quick piece of it. The actual customization and build out of it is uh, being done off-site but sometime b before the end of the month we should <coughs> have that case uh, installed and built out and uh, part of our efforts to um, improve the uh, the lobby out there we're making a lot of um, improvements to try to make it more uh, one of aesthetically appealing and also uh, provide um, some benefits to uh, customers that come in one piece of that is is uh, the addition at the treasurer collector's office and the town clerk's office with um, a, a, with a essentially a shelf piece for folks to be able to do business at uh, was not considered when they did the initial build out so it's essentially you come up to them and on the treasurer collector side and, and on there you got a glass wall with no place to fill out forms and, and take care of business so that'll all be included to kind of match what we're doing with with this cabinet and kind of big future plans uh, improvements for that location. We're hoping to um, relocate the, uh, the uh, POW um, piece chair location to the lower town hall, um, getting some artifacts that are going to be donated to the town from the, uh, 
um, American Legion. I think they have thirty some thirty seven or something something like that number of uh, Maine and residents that were killed in action and you're kind of you know looking at kind of dedicating a veterans area in the lower level that will tie in nicely with with the the chair and that um, you know that uh, that assembly there it just kind of looks a little out of place now um, people see it but it, it doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, meaning the way it's laid out. So I think it'll be a nice touch to the lower level and uh, more of Where a Where would you want to put it? Area. Downstairs? Um, we're still looking at that, um, but possibly when you go in the lower meeting room, that, that right side of the right-hand side wall of the entryway uh, going in, maybe that corner type of piece. And um, the newly constructed wall uh, is already, it's, it's part of sort of this meeting space and it has some uh, artwork that folks display there and, and so forth um, probably wouldn't be going there so I sort of like having it in the lobby where it, it has a place of honor whereas you know, yeah. downstairs you sort of you know if, if there's a way that we can get it so that it becomes um, you know some place that people go to view it's we're, not just we're lost, looking at cleaning up uh, stairs there's a lot more traffic downstairs too you know all day long people into DPW OMS and they park out back and come upstairs yeah so, we have to f we'll have to figure out exactly where down there, but um, as far as giving it the justice in the wall space it's needed, it can't happen there. Yeah. You know, we're going to take this whole Again. side by a new improved um, historical artifact cabinet. On the opposite side, um, we're looking at providing a better space for posting of meetings. That's not just the town clerk's uh, bulletin board that's there now that's kind of loose papers and things like that. It'll be a controlled cabinet that'll blend in nice so that's sort of the bigger plan of of that space um, if it was twice the size of that you know I would be you know far having it on the main level as well but to be honest with you it's just as Andrew said just as many people never come upstairs I mean if their business is solely with a building permit or seeing the DPW is I've had people that don't have no idea how to even get upstairs uh, so I, you know, I don't know depending on where we locate in the lower level it does have just as much of an impact I would think um, not to mention, just um, aside from that, our veterans agent is located on the basement level. So you walk by the veterans office, you know, that's where, you know, it would be there somewhere. So <coughs> those type of folks may never come upstairs. Um, record management system, if anybody's been in town all the last couple of weeks, they've seen the overflow of use of um, hallway space, et cetera, that uh, is a big um, that we've made significant impacts. They've taken a, a two-week sort of break um, due to their their scheduling uh, and availability with uh, their staff that was planned. Um, but it gives us a little bit of a, a breather as well in that two weeks and that we can um, prepare to remove uh, shelving and items that are kind of the next step that they need to be able to uh, have freed out and, and uh, freed up and, and removed from spaces. So it's allowed... Uh, you know, Aaron and uh, and Fred to be able to focus on some of that stuff. So when they come back in two weeks, they'll uh, they'll have that space available to them. But it's it's going along great, and it's uh, very noticeable. I mean, the staff are really seeing uh, you know the big picture come together. It's sort of you know you look at areas, it's it's a clutter, complete mess. But as you see other areas free up, and the amount that we are already requesting of um, for disposal is significant. Um, so it's going to be. Uh, a way overdue uh, needed uh, project uh, excited about before and after photos to yeah they're preparing uh, King information will be preparing a full uh, actual presentation type of thing where they'll show before and after photos of the way the vault looked and the additional storage rooms um, which were spread throughout the town <coughs> um, aside from the you know aesthetically and accessibility it's just it's going to create the ability to be able to uh, get it to a point where it's everything has been identified and located and tracked and it's simple to add to it if we hadn't gone through this process um, we probably would have never gotten to that to the ability to do that in-house so um, it's good uh, what else do I have the uh, Waltham Street McDonald development um, piece uh, if you've noticed that some of the work is done there and some of it isn't um, it has not been uh, signed off by the DPW. In fact, the DPW has been uh, the one sort of pushing 
um, McDonald development along to try to get things. So it's not a case of uh, a hold up on the town's end that's held up uh, the completion of the project. Um, I've been in contact as of July 1st with our uh, attorney, um, and he's had communications with uh, McDonald Development's uh, attorney that represented him on this matter, and um, they'll be filing um, the uh, paperwork, et cetera, for the, uh, the daily um, fines that are noted in the uh, agreement. The agreement, you know, um, was an agreement that was filed as a uh, judgment. What's that? A judgment. As a, yeah, it's a it's a judgment agreement. Um, it's no different than if the the court if the judge were to make a ruling, um, and that that's essentially what we have. So that judgment agreement uh, has been violated. It's the next step to um, recoup that. So there's a letter that's being drafted and will be submitted and served properly. And yeah, I think the bulk of the work's done. I mean, from what I what I understand, I mean this the conduits and the electrical has been put in place but the lights themselves are not installed um, there's some additional sidewalk uh, improvement pieces that um, our engineer is working with them to say that he still needs to do so uh, essentially what I think is nice about the way the uh, agreement was written from our legal team is that it, it very clearly defines um, what project completion is and what final work is so there's a definition of, of uh, what that is. It's very clear as to um, you know what is complete and what is a complete project. And it's currently not where it's at now. Um, that's it on report. I do have one item that I'd just to bring to the board's attention for this evening is a, another reserve fund transfer that just came, um, well, just coming to the board now, but it's been an item that's uh, been a few weeks in the making. Um, we were just waiting to see what what the result of it was, and that's the basement level um, air conditioning unit that we've had we've had issues with over the years. We've spent um, a fairly decent amount of money with having to repair it. It's gone down, and we've had to call it in and repair it. Well, we've been buying time, and it's at a point now where it's completely gone. Um, it's we've had a couple of contractors look at it, prepare proposals. And uh, it, it was added just today. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it yet, but there's, it's labeled in there as a RFT, Reserve Fund Transfer for the AC. Um, the facilities manager has prepared the um, transfer form and a justification memo um, as to the need of, of it. And uh, he's recommending that we, um, we seek funding now to, to do the, uh, the project and, and, do it and get it done. Um, again, I do know in the last couple of years we, we have put some money into it just to keep it sort of band-aid, keep it going, but both contractors have indicated that it's beyond uh, repair and that it needs to be replaced. Um, the current unit that's there has uh, been operational for about 35 years and it certainly has exceeded its life expectancy. Um, so I just want to notify the board, both this item and the other um, reserve transfer request that's out there from June 30th um, will be presented by the uh, facilities manager and the uh, town accountant to the finance committee um, on July 13th at their July 13th meeting. Any questions? Okay. Um, yeah, at this point, I've asked uh, the town accountant to discuss with the finance committee there. <coughs> it's an issue that, that's happened in FY15. Technically, that money can be encumbered still even after that meeting date. Um, there be that this particular item, it's not, obviously it's not coming before the board and didn't come to me until FY16, but it it's, uh, <coughs> won't be repaired to till um, FY16, but it's, it's similar to other items. Um, so they'll discuss with the finance committee on which reserve fund. There is enough money to cover the two requests out of FY15 um, reserve funds. Is it including the requests we talked about the last time? Yes. Okay. For the two. Yep. Yeah. All right. That's all I have. Chairman report. I was going to ask about the um, Parker and Waltham Street myself, so. My report. 
Right. No report today. Um, board member reports, Jason. Yeah, uh, Kevin, I have a question for you. You can explain to me how this works. Um, someone reached out to me, and I know, I believe Selectman Gavin has mentioned in the past that for some reason public access is no longer carried on Comcast. It's not live. Yeah, it's not live. It's I think summer. they, um, right. Yeah, and WAVM is, is well, not there all the summer. No, but this was but going back. I think you would mention no, that. I, I, you, I, don't remember mentioning oh, okay. it. I don't. I think I don't think they provide the because this is a, a FiOS live feed over there. I think it, I I believe they show the repeat, but the actual live viewing is only for <coughs> Verizon FiOS customers. Okay. I can get further information on that, but I believe I'd that's, be curious to see how, how that it is. to yeah, how I, the public access I, works. I believe for you government. can you can access the public access um, and view these meetings, but it's not in a live view. They're pre-recorded. They play them, but you know, on there. But okay. Anybody yep. have any more than that? But That's okay. You I'll get, get some You can get back to me. I, I'm just curious because I've had a few folks right. reach out who are apparently Comcast customers who said, "Why can't I watch meetings?" So, okay. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, this. Uh, I'll get more uh, get The new that. chairman. Um, you may want to consider, or we may want to consider, at the next meeting discussion of uh, subcommittee. Continuing the subcommittee, uh, there are still a number of items that we need to address and get before the board, including uh, water and sewer regs. Uh, I believe there's a nuisance bylaw still floating around out there. <coughs> a few other things that we probably want to do without tying up uh, the full board for a full meeting. Um, and then Kevin's questions for you. Uh, after the last meeting, we discussed uh, Coolidge and <coughs> the facilities manager was going to take a look at some of the repairs that were needed in the condition of the building. Um, has that one has that happened? I don't know. Andrew, have you had any conversation with him about that? Um, I have not. Um, I do know that he has a uh, project plan and is resecuring a quote for the roof from the roofer that we used for the, the numbers that were given to the uh, reuse task force. Um, and getting, you know, he's getting competitive quotes for that and then also uh, a time frame. So for instance, uh, it's all well and good if we hire somebody, but if we get into September, October and they say we can't get the staging in place until next spring, you know, our, our concern is the winter. So we wanna make sure that the quotes are not just uh, the best value, but also uh, time sensitive so he was instructed to do that after the reuse meeting I don't know the status of it tonight okay has there been any movement on I would assume the food pantry is still in the building yes and yeah, I'm the uh, I, after the meeting I reached out to me and I will be getting together um, in the next you know, couple of weeks scheduling wise to, to work that out Okay. Um, at this point, um, yeah, they, they have no needs, need requests uh, of the space they're in. Um, there's nothing actively going wrong. They had a few leaks that uh, we believe have been resolved, and um, that was also part of uh, the facilities manager's double check. But um, I'll be meeting with uh, with them. I know that Mary brought back um, the information to her board with regards to the food pantry update, and um, it was very positive and. They, uh, they thanked uh, this board and, and the town for letting us utilize that space, and I'll, I'll work that out with her. Um, that's all. Dave, David? Yeah, a couple things. A um, couple issues that Chris, um, Kevin, last time we talked at, at our selections meeting about that letter that came in about the family plot at the cemetery. And you had indicated you were, that Chris had already drafted up a letter in response to the gentleman that had written to us. And I haven't seen that in our packet or whatever. Do we know if that letter went out and can we get a copy of it? Yeah. Um, is this the um, Hay Street thing? No. no this is the, this was the, condition, this was of the condition of the cemetery with oh, the gentleman who came sorry. to visit his parents. 
Yeah. yeah. We were told that the letter would go out. You, Chris was apparently had already written the letter the last we uh, heard, and that you were going to speak to them the next day. Yeah, I, I'll we'll go back and look at that. Okay. I think he sent me. I think I thought my comment was that he sent me an email prior to that meeting, and I hadn't had a chance to send that out. But I'll. They, he did send an update um, in it. I don't know that he he drafted a letter to the individual that, that okay. complained. Yeah, I'll get you the information right. he provided. While you're speaking with Chris Okafer, um, you had mentioned also that you were going to be speaking with Chris about the whole mulch and compost pile yes. issue that we heard about. Can you report to us about what we heard on that? Yeah, I, uh, there was, I think the whole board might have. We all got the letter. Okay. Got the letter. So I, I have responded to that resident um, and let her know that we, we don't have any um, you know, historical complaints of uh, certainly within the last couple of years that um, with regards to nuisance odors, things like that. I did meet with Chris and again, I, I did some homework and research and I responded back to her. Um, I can provide that response, re forward that response as an FYI to the board, but essentially um, that site has been in place for decades as a compost site um, the only thing that gets dumped there is once a year um, we typically have three weeks of yard waste pickup um, we typically only allow one of those pickups to be dumped there because we just don't have the capacity of the room the other two uh, pickups go to our waste hauler uh, location their site which is at, in Hopkinton at EL Harvey so annually we only dump once um, that's actively um, gets turned some scheduled period with DPW utilizing their loader. Uh, after 18 months, uh, we get to a point where we bring in a third party with a very, it's a significant large uh, screener that comes in. It's an organic um, guy that owns this very large screener. We've been using it for years. What happens is that material is then screened and the um, product of that becomes usable compost. That compost is then hauled down to the DPW yard, which is accessible and available for residents to use as they wish. Um, as much as they can shovel, they can have. Um, and, and again, you know, that's it. I, the discussion I had with uh, Chris was I've asked him to um, take into consideration their schedule when they do it um, with regards to wind direction, things like that, if they can try to make that work and, and recognize that, you know, they're potential of, of a nuisance uh, odors from it, but uh, you know, we're not receiving any, that's the first complaint I've seen. I live closer to it than that condo and I've never smelt anything. Yeah. And I, I the mean, only thing you get up there for smell is once it, once or twice a year, the guy that owns the apple orchard that runs along. The that's the other piece. He fertilizes. The apple. He, he spreads a little fertilizer once in a while. That's, that that's the only smell I ever smell. It could be mixed between the two. I mean, uh, one thing we don't put up there is anything but leaves. So uh, there's no um, there's no grass clippings. Um, there's nothing of any other material other than the residents' curbside leaves. We don't even take our own municipal um, material there. You know, in the sense of from DPW, it's literally just that once a year, and then it, the pile gets turned. Um, you know, based on their schedule, and as it breaks down, I would imagine you know during the loading, the when the loader is up there during that activity. Um, you know, perhaps as that gets turned, it may, it may, it may be an odor that yeah. comes from it. But okay. um, yeah, like and it's to that point, and Stowe, the apple, they, there's some odors that may come from that. But um, I've been up there a thousand times. I, I really have never had any issues. Um, not like living on Pine Street. And well, I didn't even know it existed. So yeah, that's. Um, yeah. Um, next question. Um, thank you for sending out those annual guidelines that you sent out to us, but uh, in reviewing them, they need to be cleaned up a bit. They talk about a vice chair and a, yeah. uh, you know. Uh, so, to, uh, in reference to the full policies piece, is that the, the in longer? In reference to the ones that, the, actually, the Board of Selection <coughs> approved those in, in 2009. Yeah, so. And we they, were, they were supposed to be cleared up with the corrections back then and nothing's ever We happened. have a red line version of that, which was actually dated of 2013. Um, there's been edits that have made to that, but I don't think have officially been uh, adopted or approved. Um, you know, what I would suggest is, is we can recirculate that and uh, perhaps work off of that because there is a, in our policies, 
Um, the, the approved ones is what I sent out, which was adopted in 2009, but we do have revised ones that were 2013. I just don't think they were ever officially yeah, it, it references, like I say, vice chair, but also references that at the meeting following the election, there will be a re, you know, a yeah. re-election of, you know, yeah. and all no, that's agreed. not, I yeah. they need so, to be updated. Uh, we have that. We just need to clean language. that all up. Okay. Um, has there been any contact with attorney Witten regarding our latest communication, you know, the latest meeting we had, we were going to be contacting attorney Witten and where are things with that? Is he working on anything? Um, he has been contacted. He was contacted that next day, um, and, and he's on my list to kind of follow up. He was doing some research on it, and I haven't heard from him. Um, okay. But I'll close that, that gap with him. Okay. Yep. And then lastly, um, what do you know about Stratus and Mill and Main? Officially? Off the record? Well, is there anything that's official? <laughs> <laughs> it's not public. Okay. But and then that's, that's, uh, that's enough. That's enough. Possible they could be relocated. Okay. That is all. Tim? Uh, Becky, where can I find the most current list of committees and members? <coughs> Town Clerk. Town Clerk. Town Clerk has them? Okay. I was just doing some perusing of my committees and online. The minutes are very old. The committee members are very old, so that's my next task. Yeah. All I got. Terrence? Yeah, just a couple things. Uh, back at the Memorial Day Parade, I actually had a resident approach me, uh, knowing that I was coming on the board, and asked if I would uh, talk to the board about extending an early invite to the junior ROTC program kids from Aswood Valley Technical High School, who have a substantial amount of maiden <coughs> children that go there. They march every year in par parades like Hudson and Marlboro, and they were asking if they could march in the Maynard Parade. So I said that I would bring it to the board and the TA for some information on that. I, I would think we'd have to extend an invite pretty early to lock them in if we wanted to. Right. Uh, that How many are they? It's the, the parade is actually run by the Veterans Council. It's not Maynard's parade per se, but I certainly support the, uh, the effort to contact them, but we should probably let them know. Marge Ianuzo, who uh, well, we're approving the permit. Yeah, um, yeah, but even prior to that, maybe if we let her know and she can contact. Yeah, we'll do that and let them know that they've reached out and expressed Marge interest. And, uh, it's a fairly new program that um, that was established by the the most recent um, superintendent. It's only been in existence for like the last two years, um, so it is a new program, and uh, you know this is exactly what they should be doing. So I, I think uh, we'll get that word over to them and try to connect uh, connect the folks at Aspit with them. Yeah, in fact, we are guests of the Veterans Council at that parade. We sure. should, they invite us to attend, so it's their parade. But I certainly so maybe we adopt an official letter to Marge yeah. or whoever it is certainly asking if they would extend. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we'll do that. Uh, the other thing, um, trash pickups and deliveries. Uh, a couple notices on uh, people taking some liberties. You and I talked the other day briefly about uh, uh, some delivery issues at one of the uh, commercial establishments. But it seems to be coming before the 7 a.m. issues, uh, primarily, ironically, at 124 Atkin Street. So uh, very liberal early in the morning, very, very loud, uh, certainly before the time frame they're supposed to be able to do that. So, Is that specific with um, trash collection? Yeah, this is the trash collection. Actual delivery. Okay, Actual so trash dumpster. collection. Dumpster, yes. Yeah. Prior to uh, 7 a.m. Yeah, so I don't know if we want to look into that and talk to the, the management company or whatever about <coughs> what the rules are. They were there at 6.15 today. Okay. Yeah, we'll uh, I'll have the um, health agent uh, <coughs> reach out to the, the dumpster <coughs> contractor with a formal letter because the, the contractors themselves all have to be permitted. Um, they're permitted to haul waste essentially. So every dumpster, uh, granted, there's uh, several dumpsters that are maintained by you know the same um, the same contractor, but there's only a handful of contractors. Those contractors are permitted. Um, and are given a copy of our solid waste regulation. So um, that's all permitted by the Board of Health, and I'll, I'll pass that along and ask them to. Uh, is that the only one, trash wise? Trash wise is the only one I know about. I would imagine it's happening in other places too, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, and even we even have to do the same to remind our own hauler that the 7 a.m. start on the curbside pickup every once in a while. We have to okay. remind them. If you hear it on the golf course this morning, 
No, they're still banging pretty loud. Yeah, yeah. That's quite a ways away. By the time, by the time when we were there, we were far away from Brown Street. Okay. And uh, finally, uh, happened to notice as I was driving with my youngest daughter, who just got a driver's permit, <coughs> and observing the the road a little more clearly. I think. Um, Crosswalks up and down Route 27 from the fire station up heading towards Cumberland Farms, non-existent anymore. I mean, what's the plan to either repaint these? They're all getting the town wide getting repainted. Okay, all right. Um, I think they should be. They just did Parker Street. Done within the next couple weeks. Okay. Parker Street. So it's on the docket to be done. Okay, good. Yeah, they're gonna do them. Usually at the at the uh, July one when the money comes in. Yeah. Okay. They paint the roads. Yeah, no. and we do have. I mean, they're they're doing that. Um, that's that's a conversation that. Chris and I had at our weekly meeting and make sure that that was in queue. Um, we've also hired back some of the uh, some of the summer help. Um, there's been one individual uh, that's been utilizing the water sewer department. So things like that happened in prior years with painting of uh, fire hydrants. You know some of that type of tasks that we've used summer help for will continue to get done as well. So um, some of that aesthetic improvements, but definitely crosswalks are on the. Uh, they should be done in the next couple of weeks. There's also, I saw there's also some pothole repair, sewer drainage frames and covers, all that are slated to be repaired. Yep. Should be happening in the next few weeks. Good as time. well as uh, actual paving, repaving projects. Is, uh, I think they're starting um, July 9th uh, on the, the next round of paving. Which definitely is uh, Thompson Street, and uh, I get, I'll send that out to the board. The next, the next one. In fact, I think it should have been sent out today through my a notice through my blog. It's probably on the <coughs> town website now. Um, so, if anybody hasn't followed my Facebook, I sent, try to put out information on that as much as possible too. That um, is timely for residents too. So, um, but that paving piece will be started. On Thompson Street, I think on the ninth. And just if I could, just as a side to that, if, if you've been on Thompson Street, we're in conversation with uh, Saracen Properties about the the fence, uh, lack of fence, along the sidewalk edge of their building. Um, they've met with a contractor, and they have a plan of cleaning that space up and putting in a new fence. So currently, we have the new sidewalk. We'll have a new uh, road there, but. The fence is dilapidated and fallen down, and so the old. Uh, so th there is um, plans of replacing and improving that area. Civil Service Commission meets Good July fifteenth. Uh, Can you, you provide us an update on our next meeting um, regarding our case? Civil Service it's Commission is not where the case is. It's in the no. It's July fifteenth with the commission. Yeah. Or whatever commission that is, can you provide us an update? Yeah, um, it's the civil service commission is is when the next uh, when the hearing was continued to uh, to see the, the hearing was continued to see um, they didn't take any action on it because they wanted to see how far along the legislative process we were. Right. I was so asking, what um, we're going to do is uh, we're getting a, a um, update letter from uh, Representative Hogan that can be submitted. Um, the attorney is going to try to submit that and try to get it continued without actually having a show on the 15th because it's not moving along as quickly as it should. Um, and uh, so either they're going to meet on the 15th or it's going to be continued. And we don't have an update on when it will be back before the uh, Committee on Public Service. So we're trying to get an update on that. Um, and my understanding is it's <laughs> they're not real forthcoming with that information we can't find out when the next uh, committee meeting is so they've heard it it's been presented and heard it just hasn't been acted on but I I'll definitely will provide an update that's it do we adjourn this meeting the first one Motion to adjourn. We're good. Do we have an executive session? Yes. We do. Yes. Um, do you have a form? Do you have a form? I might have one. Uh, we're not entering.
entering back into uh, open, session. open session. So. Purpose of the meeting is for um, litigation and uh, strategies. Strategies with regards to litigation and collective bargaining agreements. Both of those items get checked. Please. Yes, uh, unless you need a roll call. Yeah, you do. And, and Chris, you need to announce that we will be uh, <coughs> entering into okay, executive so. session with <coughs> the intention of returning to. Okay, so. So I have to close the first meeting first? Yes. A motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? I don't think that's no. Yeah, is that the way? You gotta well, how do you want to do? You gotta go on the vote a roll call vote okay. to go into executive session, make a note that we will not be coming back into uh, open meeting and then adjourn this meeting. Okay. So um, I will make all a motion to move into executive session. Okay. In favor of executive session, David? Aye. We need a second to end, too. Oh, yeah. I'll second. Okay. Second, Terrence. Okay. Um, Jason? Yes. Terrence? Yes. Tim? Yes. And I am in favor as well. Chris up top and mention that note the time which is 925 and then we <coughs> made the motion and the second. You want me to?